Now, tonight, we will know what the Federal Reserve will do. Would it be a 25 basis point cut or what the Wall Street wants, the 50 basis point? But regardless, brace for the huge volatility if the Federal Reserve doesn't follow what the Wall Street wants. Now, to me itself, 2025, the recession is kind of confirmed. Let me explain to you more in detail. But before that, this came up apply as usual. Now, first of all, let's bring back 10 days ago. 10 days ago, we know that, okay, the FOMC, uh, the Fed Fund, the Fed Watch on the CME group should indicated that, that it should be a 25 basis point cut. It's up to 70%, right? The current rate is at 5.25 to 5.5 for now. That means the market was looking at 70% of a 25 basis point cut. And that time we saw Fed Williams says that now it's appropriate to lower the interest rate. Now, if you remember that this year, there shouldn't be any interest rate cut. This is something that the Fed um, dot plot said. I'll cover this later. But now, guys, things have changed, okay? Apparently, Morgan Stanley came out very strongly and says that most likely the Fed Reserve will not cut by 25 basis point. It will be a 50 basis point. And more important, they feel that it will not trigger any growth worries. As a matter of fact, now we all know that Morgan Stanley has been pretty bearish in the market. But yet, recently, after the turnaround, they have been very bullish. And now they're looking at more upside to go. Now, to me, the upside is kind of confident that it may happen after a rate cut. But to have it at 50 basis point today, now Wall Street are looking at it and 66% looking at 50 basis point. Now, that means that, right, if compared to what happened 10 days ago, now the market has shifted to a 50 basis point cut tonight. The question is, is why are they looking at that? Is it because they want the stock market to go higher or because they know something is bad? I don't know sure. But to me, it's all right now, we know that everybody is looking at a 50 basis point. And of course, there are a lot of reports saying that if they actually happen, there will be a lot of money being you know, wiped out because when that happened, the US dollar will depreciate in value, right? And that will cause a lot of stir in the market, especially gold price may shoot up. NASDAQ may have initial uh, upside first, then some selling and so forth. So that all this tells me that I have to be very careful from today. Now, you look at it right now, that thing is, is why the market is looking for a, a potential wipeout of dollars in the market because this is the, the Fed dot plot chart. Now, you look carefully, guys, you can see that for 2024, the market was looking at something like this, which means that the maximum is a 25 basis point cut. Most of them were looking at status quo. But now, you're going to have a 50 basis point. Now, it's actually for 2025 that by then you expect a lot of rate cuts. And that's probably because, as I said, I suspected that there's a need for that. If not, the US recession will kick in. So from here itself, it actually tells me and affirms me that next year, there could be real selling in the market. Now, let me explain to you the difference between a 25 basis point cut and a 50 basis point cut. Now, if going to be a 50 basis point cut, it's about risk management. Cutting by 50 could seen as a regret minimization. It's better to cut more now than avoid falling behind the curve if the economy weakens later. But of course, for a 25 basis point cut, it focuses on more cautious approach. Okay, Because if a 50 basis point cut, it could signal a more urgent situation, might not align with the Fed communication leading to the current meeting, and it's, it could make it harder to control inflation if the financial condition loosens too much. So the thing is this, it's better for Fed to use to cut 55 basis point than 50 basis point. But regardless, once this cut is done, the inversion that we had in the 10 year and two year will change. And this is where it gets very, very dangerous. Let me explain to you right now. Now this is the from 1980, the US yield curve between the 10 year minus the two year. And you can see very clearly that we have an issue right now. Now the thing is this, all right? The last time we see a very deep inversion was in this 1978 to 1980, 623 days. Then after that, the sell order inversion is between 100 days to 3, 400 days. But right now, okay, guys, this inversion has stretched to 783 days. Okay. Now, one thing to note, guys, is something very, very critical and very important. Every time the inversion starts to review, reverse, and then go back to the zero mark, usually we will see a recession. Now, if you look at the number of this table itself, right? We, shall, we are roughly about a year itself from now that we're going to see a potential 
recession. So you look back here, this is the reason why you can see the mainstream media, everyone is talking about recession coming in, it's flashing red right now, and we need to prepare for that. Now this is not a joking matter because it's something that we can see right in front of our eye. Now the main main thing is this, if you look carefully, it's uh, what is so important of this inversion. Now remember, when the Fed was cutting rates, that brought the inversion right into the market, into the market system. So now with the Federal Reserve looking at to, in, to cut rate, okay, it was this where this part is also part of my bad. Why it came down back then, it was all the rate hiking, okay, that caused the inversion. So now the market is speculating that the cut the cut rate gonna happen soon. And if that actually really happened, we can see very clearly when this actually happened, when the inversion reverse, you can see that it's very, very sure the recession will be next. Okay, so that is one good reason why we need to be careful. But of course, you say, could this just be a pattern? But how about the fundamental? Well, one thing to note very clearly is that we all know what's happening with this SAM rule. Now, SAM rule recession indicator is something I covered in the last video. And I shared with you guys that it's now way above the 0.5% mark. Now, if you look carefully itself, right, every time when the SAM rule actually goes above 0.5%, we will have a recession. And if you look at it carefully, it does have alignment with the 10 years and two years inversion. So it seems that they have a, a uh, what you call similarities in this, and it seems to be uh, a good indication. Now, of course, it's not 100%, but it's good for at least 80 to 90%. And if you look at it right now, the soft landing on the soft ground shows that we're going back to the same level, which happened again back in 2009. 2000 itself, and then the 1987. So every time when we see this happening, right, it do shows that the market will enter a recession. And of course, if you look at the um, current non-farm payroll, you can see that clearly that we have a big, big issue here. Non-farm payroll show that it's declining. And every time there's a decline in numbers, we will see a recession. And of course, right now, if you look more into detail, you can see right now, the new orders are also declining, all right? It's not as bad as this, it but it's really declining. Now, it means that the economy itself, the last three years, is not booming, but it's just the stock market itself is going up on its own. So if you look at it right now, if this is the photo, then guys, we are in for a recession. And now if you look at it again, if you put it set to side, you put the labor market with S&P, you can see the very strong, the what they call, very strong, um, uh, correlationship when you can see that the US payroll drops, SMP will peak, and when it starts to drop itself, you can see that SMP falls. All right, so but of course, if the labor market is doing very well, SMP follows. But similarly, when it happens again, it's where the selling comes in. So, right now, guys, we are still all right, we're not at the point whereby it goes below the zero percent mark. So, as long as we are still above the hundred, the zero, we're still cool, but undeniable, right. The decline of this is not very welcome for the overall market. So let's hope that U.S. economy continue to do well, so the SMB can continue to go up. But if it doesn't, if we see a continued depreciation of the labor market, then we have an issue, guys. So they put it all together itself, right? If you look at this, this is the SM, this Dow Jones chart versus the crude oil chart. Now I covered this many times in my previous video. You can see that many people thought that the crude oil is actually a big issue or a detrimenting issue for the Dow Jones actually is wrong. If you look carefully, whenever the crude oil price goes up, the US market goes up. When the crude oil price goes down, the stock market goes down. Can you see that? Interesting, right? So it's not about the costing and the inflation, it's that the demand of crude oil is really based on the US economy. So in short itself, the US economy and the crude oil market is kind of related. So now take a look, guys, this is a crude oil chart. This is the Dow Jones chart. What do you see? It's definitely a divergence. Now, I have checked all the way. There's no way I see much divergence since 2009 until now. But most of the time itself, all right, the crude oil price goes down, the US market also will go down eventually. So my bet is here is simple. I suspect that there is a potential downside on the, SM, the Dow Jones US market equity market in the near term. It won't be now, it'll be in the near term. Now, if you look at it into seasonal pattern, then what I just said a moment ago may be different because why? The seasonal pattern shows that by the second week, okay, usually by the second half, 
of September is the worst two weeks trading period for the S&P. Since when? Well, since as long as it can be, since 1928. Wow. So of course, this past performances is not an indicative of future returns, but nonetheless, it's all right. It does have its uh, merit. So the thing is this, the last four September on S&P, you can see the market was down about on average about 4 to 5%. So, which means that, right, from the second week, which is kind of today, we could see some selling. So, would it be the profit taking that we're waiting for? Well, it is possible, but I don't think that it will be too bad because I think that the market will still go up eventually, actually towards the US election time. So, you look at it in chart form right now before we end this video, you can take a look here itself. Is that the current price for the Dow Jones stream of 41730 on the CFDs. I suspect that the upside itself should be able to brush past the high, which is 41,903. As a matter of fact, it could go as high as 42,000. But the same thing is this, the market is already parking itself and believing that the US Federal Reserve will cut by 50 basis points. So what if the US Federal Reserve decided to cut only by 25 basis points? Now, if that actually happened, the selling will bring it back down to as high, to as low, sorry, of 41,070. So which means that you look at it in mathematics, the upside itself is about 300 points from where we are right now, the upside. The downside itself could be up to 700 points. So if you ask me, right, you can do a do you can do a dual trade here. You can put a sell limit at 30 at 42,000, or you can take a short position when the time is right to aim for a 700 point drop. So with that, you can actually see that you can trade on it and make some money from the market. Now, of course, the more important thing is this, guys. This is S&P chart created by someone else. He did a very strong exploration of the S&P versus the upside, and you can see that there's some co relationship happening over here. So he's actually wondering if there could be a pullback on the S&P back to about 4,200 in long in the near term. Well, I think it's all very possible. As a matter of fact, if you look back to the, the chart earlier itself, right? You'll see something that I just uh, missed out earlier is that even if the market is pullback all the way by 5%, it's only at 39,800. So it's still a very good level, which I think that this is gonna be a very good level for you to buy into the market if we see pulls back. So I would love to see something like this where the, SM, the Dow Jones pulls back to 39,800 and then it gets sweeper along here and then it goes back up again for 42,000. I think that will be a pretty, pretty good level that I think that we can concentrate to trade during this few weeks. So what do you think? Let me know in the, in the comment box. This is Sal signing off. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.